And I do believe that a gun like this is going to allow me personally to shoot better, be faster, and be more violent when violence is needed than a smaller gun or a rifle that's in my truck 300 yards away. Ah uh, yes, the EDC, the Everyday Carry. The, the acronym that everyone loves to talk about, these big buzzwords are starting to drive me up a wall. However, there is a time and place for them. I do think that every guy should have a good EDC. Now, this is mine. This doesn't mean it has to be yours. Everything is going to be subjective based on the mission. Now, the mission for me is protecting my family and myself and also just having good stuff to have, you know, on my person. So, I'm gonna show you guys some different things that I have on my person every day. Now, EDC does stand for everyday carry. This isn't the occasional carry. This is the, if you stop me and ask what I'm carrying, it's probably going to be these items. I might switch things up a little bit for review processes or checking something else out, but this is the stuff that I'm going to have on me. I'm going to either have this item or a different one. So I'll first start off with the, the nice little things that are, that are, that are kind of nice to have that everyone has. Uh, I'll start off with a wallet. So the wallet that I have is a Rosum. This is essentially a knockoff of a Ridge wallet. I got this on Amazon for like, I want to say 25 bucks or something like that. The main thing is I like the concept of a Ridge wallet. It is neat. However, Ridge wallets, they, they're costing like 80 to 100 bucks for a small piece of metal sandwiched together with a piece of elastic and you can get them in different patterns. This is like a, a carbon fiber pattern of some sort. I'm not sure if it's real. I really don't care. Also in this pocket, I'm going to have one of two knives. This is a Ontario Rat Model 2 in D2 steel. This is the slightly higher end model, still relatively inexpensive. They're like 35 or 40 bucks for one of these. It does have D2 steel as opposed to like the 8CR 14 MOV or whatever, the Chinese stainless steel that uh, the cheaper models come with. The D2 steel is pretty durable. Uh, it edge lasts a pretty long time. It is a little tricky to sharpen, but I do like it. Uh, this one here has the, uh, I believe G10 scales on it, and it is pretty comfortable. The other one I'll carry if I'm feeling a little more high end is going to be the Benchmade Bug Out. This is the S35V steel. It's a really nice steel for knife blades. Uh, I do have this one upgraded with titanium hardware like all the blue screws and all that as well as titanium titanium steel or the titanium um, scales here so i replaced the g10 with titanium and it is a very nice knife i like carrying this one a lot both of these as you will see are right around the same size i don't think carrying larger knives in my opinion is really needed for me anyways uh, i'm not trying to get a deer with my pocket knife guys it's it's for opening up boxes and whittling on little things and you know stripping wire things like that so i do use my knives as tools uh, so i don't have anything super high end yes i think benchmade is on the higher end of what i would want to carry however uh, there are knives that are much more expensive that people carry for some reason i don't get it all right next up we're going to go with handheld lights so both of these are ones that have worked their way into my rotation uh, this is a cheaper model but has really really good features this is the goon beam uh, I can't remember which one it is. The EDC, I think it's the medium, uh, medium lumen one that has medium candela on it. Uh, I do have it wrapped in a little bit of goon tape just so it's a little bit easier to hold on to. Uh, but other than that, I've got a, a pocket clip on it and this is a nice little beater light. Both of these run off of 18650s. I believe both of them are dual fuel. I know for a fact this one is. I'm not sure about this one, but I've been also carrying this one. This one was given to me by a friend. This is a cloud defensive MCH. Uh, this is the EDC light head, so it doesn't have quite as much candela. It's a little more flood to it. I find that it's a little bit nicer. I had a high candela one at one point. I didn't really like it very much. It was a little bit too tight of a hot spot for just kind of the stuff I was using it for. So I prefer to have something like this one here. Uh, this one is the dual fuel model and it is uh, programmable so you can have, I just have it set on a low and high power so I can alternate between them. Um, but other than that, they have the exact same pocket clip on them. 
I do have things I like about each light a little bit better. I have had issues with my cloud defensive light flickering on me. I know that's a pretty controversial topic. Some people say they have, some people say they haven't, but I've personally had a cloud defensive owl that I owned as well as another MCH and this one here, and they all exhibited some form of flickering or kind of defect of some sort. And I really think that's, I don't know how to say, just not good considering these are made in the United States, touted as being some of the best lights out there and they cost what they cost. Uh, anything north of 180 bucks for one of these, uh, you're looking at buying like four of these. Uh, and in my opinion, I've had less issues with this light than this one and I've beat this one up every bit as much. So that is what it is. Uh, keys, I don't carry anything crazy. Uh, I do carry a 128 gig, uh, decently fast, it's USB 3.1, uh, Samsung flash drive. Uh, make sure if you do get a flash drive on your keychain, it's one with a metal housing. That way it doesn't break off on you in your pocket when you're doing something crazy. Uh, and then I do have my, uh, my truck key here. But other than that, I keep my keys very limited. I don't need a lot of different keys. I have a key for a gun cabinet and that is it. Now I also carry a Zippo lighter. This one, as you see, does not have a uh, traditional flint style ignition system in it. This is actually powered by uh, butane, or I run propane in it, but uh, butane, and uh, they are pretty nice uh, to just have a good light. I don't smoke or anything like that, but burning trash or anything like that, it's really nice to have a light in your pocket. So that's why I have that. All right, so onto the fun stuff, the gun. Now, I used to be all aboard Team Glock. That's all I really had. That's all I really trusted. I do love Glocks. I still carry a Glock on occasion, as I'll show you. However, I have recently switched over to a Staccato P, uh, mainly because I harassed one of my friends into uh, selling me his, and so now I have a Staccato P. Love the gun. Uh, it's, it's pretty great. Uh, and for what it's worth, I don't think it's necessarily the best gun out there. However, I do shoot it exceptionally well, and I just love having uh, a semi-hand fit gun. It just it feels really nice. It's like a uh, it's like on ball bearings. It, it just feels really good. So um, what I have is a Staccato P, as I said. I do have it with a Surefire Turbo and a Holosun 507 Comp. Now Holosun did send me out this uh, red dot for review. Uh, if you want to see that review, go ahead and check the video I posted right up here and now we're gonna go into why I carry this gun now this is this is a shooter's gun this is not the well I want a gun but I don't want to train with it kind of gun to get you killed than having a, a Glock or MP or anything like that, simply based off of this right here. This manual safety will get you killed if you don't train with it. For me, I shoot ARs and all that other stuff, so I'm used to manipulating a safety with my thumb. I don't like slide mounted safeties, however, having something like this here, I can sweep off as I'm in the draw stroke. So I do appreciate um, the controls on this. I do find that um, the slide stop is really hard to hit uh, with my thumb if I'm doing a slide lock reload. I just avoid doing slide lock reloads. If I need to do one, the mag goes in and then I run my thumb like that, kind of like I'm hitting the bolt release on an AR-15. This gun is very fast. It shoots very well. I'm currently doing a review on it. Since I have the gun now, I might as well. I did stipple the frame. I found that the uh, the factory uh, texture on it, this is uh, not the old model, but this is a, a Gen 2 grip. Um, I did texture it uh, a different pattern, uh, and I found that it does help a lot with holding on to the gun. So it wasn't bad to begin with. However, I did improve it, so I'll take what I can get. This is, like I said, the Surefire Turbo, so it's got an absolute ton of candela to it. It is a, a great light. Um, I don't really like the switches very much, but that's something you kind of train around. Other than that, the only thing I really have left uh, is the holster. The holster is a T-Rex Arms sidecar. 
Uh, this is the 2.0 model. It has the spine system, and I carry it with a tourniquet. You are more likely to use a tourniquet than you are a spare mag. However, in the event that I need a spare mag, I will take a spare mag with me. Uh, it really depends on where I'm going. If I'm going into an area that's pretty crummy, I'm more likely to carry a spare mag with me. If I'm going in uh, to a city and they have like some kind of civil unrest going on in certain areas and I'm not sure where I'm going, I'm gonna have a spare mag with me, guys. Uh, mags are the most fragile part of the gun. So for me, I'm going to have a spare mag with me. And the very last thing is going to be the belts. Now I did switch out what belt I was using previously. Previously I was using a next belt. It's very similar to a core. It's got a ratcheting design. I like the buckle on the next belt a little bit better because it's a little bit smaller. It tends to fit better on my person. Uh, I do like that style of belt still. I find that in certain applications, it's really nice to be able to very discreetly adjust the tension on it while you still have your shirt over everything. You can just kind of click it up a notch and suck the gun into you a little bit more if you feel like you're printing a little bit. Uh, in my opinion, this is uh, probably the most comfortable belt that I currently have. This is from Hunter Constantine. I do have a discount code. However, I'm not really affiliated with him too much. Uh, I, I've, I've talked to him a few times on Instagram and things like that. And he did send me the belt for free to do a review on. Um, I do really like the belt. I do think that it has uh, some things that I'm not a huge fan of. I wish that the method of adjusting was a little bit better. This has a, uh, a buckle that you have to slide and it's got uh, two different sets of straps that have to like pull tension and it's a little bit hard to adjust on the fly in my opinion. Uh, however, uh, it does come with two different notches here in the main part of the belt, which is rigid. And as I just showed you, it has elastic running around the back. So you can run this thing uh, with you know pants that aren't necessarily designed for concealed carry or jeans or whatever have you and it works really well because it's got that rigid support in the front to hold the weight of the gun and then the elastic to pull everything in. I do think that as long as you have it tight enough on your person, it works really well. Now in the event that I'm feeling a little more glockish that day, I will take a gun like this. Stand by. This is my old trusty Glock 19 uh, in a sidecar 2.0 holster with a mag carrier. Sometimes I will swap this mag carrier out for the tourniquet. Really depends on what I'm feeling. Uh, however, it's a pretty, uh, pretty sweet little setup to switch around. Obviously the holster is the exact same. I carry appendix the same as the other one. This one here I run on a, a TLR7A Streamlight. Um, I do want to get one of the HLX heads, however, they're kind of on untanium right now, uh, and it comes out a little bit further, so I'll have to trim the holster, but I should be able to get uh, about 10,000 candela instead of five, so get more power that way. I do have a Radian Ramjet on here. I found that this is exceptionally reliable and helps out with performance a lot. Uh, I can shoot the gun a lot faster with this as opposed to a standard Glock 19. Uh, obviously, equipment doesn't buy skill, however, when you get to a certain point, you get a threshold and then um, in order to break past that threshold, sometimes it does help to have a little bit of equipment, if anything, just to make it more fun for you so you train more so you get better. Uh, I do have this uh, direct milled with a 509T. Uh, optic has been pretty solid. I did have one die on me in a class one time. That was a little bit annoying, but I was able to get it replaced. Hollis and did warranty it. Uh, other than that, the internals on this are completely stock. This is all a Gen 3 gun. Uh, I just have an Apex trigger shoe and then I, uh, I textured this one similarly to my staccato. So I, uh, I textured this grip and then I threw an SLR Works uh, magwell on there because uh, I think that for a Glock 19 and this size grip, having a magwell does help force my hands up into the grip a little bit better. Now guys, I'm not a big guy. As you see, I am carrying a staccato. I'm 5'8-ish on a good day. 5'8", like 162, 165 pounds, somewhere in there. And I can carry a Glock 19 with a magwell or a uh, staccato P, no issues at all. Uh, it's super humid out here, so I'm starting to sweat a lot and the shirt's starting to stick to me. Uh, and it's still relatively uh, inconspicuous uh, that I'm carrying a massive full-size 2011 with a competition red dot on it. Um, I do think that uh, people can get away with carrying a lot better guns. Now, in my truck video that you guys might have seen or you're going to go watch after this because it'll be right up there, um, I said something about not carrying a rifle in my truck. I, I think that uh, vehicles are just not a good place to keep weapons, uh, especially long term. They're going to get stolen. Uh, vehicles are the number one place that weapons are stolen from, so I'm just, I'm just not going to do that. 
I do think having a quality, reliable pistol that you can shoot really well and holds a sufficient amount of ammo is going to serve you way better because I can rip this thing out in under a second and shoot versus having somebody, uh, you know, do something and me pull out some like, you know, bodyguard pistol or something like that or revolver uh, and have five shots to deal with a problem that might require 15. And I do believe that a gun like this is going to allow me personally to shoot better, be faster and be more violent when violence is needed than a smaller gun or a rifle that's in my truck 300 yards away. If you guys like this video, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. If you think that my setup is stupid, go ahead and drop a comment down below. Let me know why you think that. Uh, if you have a similar setup and you just want to share that you have that, I would love to hear that too. It's always nice to have a little bit of confirmation bias. And then also, uh, one other thing, this is obviously my setup. I know some of these guns are expensive. I've been a gun guy for quite a while. I wanted a Staccato since I'd probably been shooting for about a year, year and a half. Uh, I saw one at a shop, I tried one out, I shot one, and I was like, this is awesome, I want one. I didn't buy one for another four years after that, guys. So, you guys gotta realize that this is obviously a destination, not a journey. You're not always going to have the fanciest stuff right away. Uh, I started out with a bone stock block. So, we all come from somewhere. Just remember that training beats any kind of equipment. It just is what it is. You're gonna have more success with training than you are with equipment. So. Obviously get a gun that you like training with, however, in my opinion, you're going to have a lot better time uh, spending $500 or $600 on a gun and $1,500 on ammo than $2,000 on a gun and not having any ammo to shoot at all. Just remember, do something today to make yourself better for tomorrow. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'll catch you later. Bye. Hey, up here.